In Krakato MX version 2.5 we have updated the existing Krakato PRT birth and Krakato PRT update operators to support not only the PRT loader as they did before but also any particle system just like the PRT source does now. So if I go and for example create uh, some arbitrary spline, I'm going to create some curve there in the XY plane and animate it with uh, a noise modifier to get uh, some quick animation. I can uh, then uh, pick this spline as a source of particles in the particle flow. I'll create a standard flow, I'll create a Krakatoa birth in place of the original birth and I'm going to pick the spline itself. I'll have to disable the position and the speed, I'll disable the rotation and for now we won't be assigning any shape. Or let's say if we do anything it will be a cube with size of 2 for later. Uh, and we shouldn't forget to enable 100% uh, display in the viewport in order to see all the particles and you'll notice that Okay, let's display the geometry. We'll see that there is one cube created on each of the points that are created and also the intermediate interpolation points. I'll disable the optimize and I'll enter for example 32 here and this is going to give me a row of uh, cubes distributed along the spline. I can go probably with 48 in order to make it a little bit more dense and if I uh, need to play back the animation, the spline is moving but the points are not following because I'm not updating them yet, I can create a Krakatoa at the update, pick that same spline and uh, now the points are going to stick to the spline and move. I also have a velocity which I can enable now and if I display the particles as lines, we're going to actually see the velocities represented correctly in the viewport by the particles. So if I want to create new particles that are moving independently from the spline but emitted from it, I could of course use a spawn test. I'll drag a spawn here and I'm going to uh, send it into an event where a force will eventually drive them up but right now these points are being emitted and they are following the uh, inherited direction the velocity that they got from the parents we can go and change the spawn to be a rate of 30 probably per, uh, that means one per frame approximately and here they are these particles are being emitted according to the motion of their parents I can go to inherit only 10% so they will be moving much less now Right now I'm using the actual interpolation points of the spline itself but uh, I could go and switch this uh, spline to actually generate the mesh geometry at render time and in the viewport. I can give it a thickness of 5 for example and give it let's say 6 sides and now if I play back each vertex of this mesh is going to spawn its own particles. Um, of course Currently the noise isn't following because it was down on the modifier stack but the moment I actually enable the animation now I'm emitting a lot more particles because I have a lot more vertices and the mesh works just like a spline and I can pick any mesh and its vertices are going to be taken automatically by both the Cryptopia the birth and the Cryptopia the update. Let's switch this line back to being a regular spline and there is uh, another way to actually create particles on a spline instead of following the knots and the interpolation points as you know we have a PRT here and the PRT here doesn't use a specific count it actually uses a, a spacing value so I can go and set a spacing of 5 in the viewport and the same in the renderer probably and I can then go and pick this spline and it's going to tell me that uh, it doesn't actually have an ID channel and uh, since it doesn't have an ID channel we'll be using the index that means the order uh, as the particles are coming in and I'm going to pick exactly the same and get the same message um, but um, it shouldn't be a problem because um, I just have to make sure that I have picked the line 
and I want to get the velocity and I can also get the color and if I move now um, my particles have spacing of 5 exactly if I want less spacing I can just dial it in 1, 2, 3, whatever and uh, I should always keep the same value also for the rendering if I decide to render these as you can see there are some particles that actually start spreading around and the problem as was described by the dialogue is since we don't have any IDs and the number of particles is actually changing because the length of the spline is changing and we are using a fixed spacing the number of particles is actually changing over time and uh, you'll see that in the very beginning especially if I disable the spawn we have a specific number 164 particles and then eventually they get more but they never get less particles get born and some of those particles are then orphaned the update doesn't know about uh, updating them because the spline at that point doesn't have any data uh, it has much less points so what we have to draw in this case is at a Krakato ID test and this Krakato ID test will be keeping track of any uh, particles that lost their IDs because they don't exist in the source anymore in the PRT here in this case and we can send them to a delete event so I'll create a delete operator and send those particles to it and now if we take a look at the counter, counter is going up and is going down and we don't have any orphans anymore the orphans get deleted pretty much immediately and uh, if we enable our spawn uh, the spawn particles will be moving correctly and there will be no streaks running around an interesting thing that we can do with the PRT here is we could use the density falloff to actually colorize the particles that we're generating in the hair itself and after that we can also colorize the um, actual particle flow so let's add the magma to the PRT here and instead of using the distance and the hair length which is the typical case for actually calculating a uh, color gradient I'm going to use a shortcut for this I'll use the color, I'll use the density and you know that the density is set uh, normally from uh, 1 at the root to 0 at the tip that means the density is falling off exactly the opposite of the gradient that we're trying to create so it would be very easy to actually say I want a function blend I'm going to use this density to control the gradient I'll start with red and end with, end with yellow and so if I take a look at the color now I have exactly the opposite it starts with yellow and ends with red so I can just swap the two inputs and we see that there is a very strong fall off and there is also uh, each knot actually gets a color that is not having the density that the rest of the samples have that appears to be a limitation of the PT here but it's not really a big deal because we have so few knots and so many interpolation points in between um, so let's say that we change the spacing to true for both viewport and for the renderer and we want to have a linear fall off if we want a linear fall off we just have to set the density fall off to 1 and now we're starting in red and going along the spline and going to yellow and if we go where it's a smaller number then the yellow will propagate closer to the root so now that we have this color or keep it linear we can go and take a look how we can render this in our particle flow so we have the cubes we have of course the lines and if we display the geometry in the viewport right now we are not seeing any colors we don't really want to see them in the viewport and the particle flow wouldn't show us the gradient that we are importing uh, but we have the color checked so what we can do is we can add a material a material static will do and I'm going to add it to the top event to the PF source itself and here I'm going to pick a standard material and in the standard material in the material editor I'm going to assign a vertex color map so we'll grab this material drag it here pick uh, the diffuse channel and go and add a vertex color vertex color channel 0 will be reading the same color that we're using there and that means that if I render now in the scanline renderer I'm going to get boxes and the boxes have exactly the colors that our uh, gradient defined in the magma so I'm using magma to colorize boxes in particle flow 
And of course, if I go further with my spawned particles and render, they all will get exactly the same color because they're inheriting the color channel from the parents. I can go here and change, of course, the um, inherited value to be 100 if I want. And since we have a force operator, we could also add a setup where we are using a space warp. We're using a wind that is blowing them up, let's say with 0 0.1. And then we can add some turbulence with 0 0.2 and 0 0.01 and 0 0.5 here. And instead of uh, following that velocity, we can say don't inherit anything. Just follow whatever the space warp say. So we have to pick the, the space warp. We pick the... Uh, wind and we can also create a drag in order to avoid them being uh, blown too much and now we have some particles that are floating up from the emitter spline based uh, uh, set of particles and if I render in the scanline renderer I can probably switch this one to use spheres or hearts or any of the other shapes that are available there I can create a heart with a size of 4 Um, so, as you can see, we're using magma colorization passing through the particle flow in order to uh, affect uh, particles that are being born using Cryctopia tip birth and Cryctopia tip date, and then spawning even more particles uh, behind them. We could do uh, exactly the same instead of picking the line or picking the PRT here, we could create a PRT source out of the spline and combine the, the best of two worlds, that means, for example, if we wanted uh, to, let's say, delete that PRT here that we were using, uh, which is currently being used uh, by the emitter, right now no particles will be created because we don't have anything, I'll pick the spline, instead of picking the spline in the two operators, I'm going to create a PRT source from it. And this PRT source can be, of course, picked just like before, as the source uh, for both operators. So nothing really changes in this case, though we don't really have uh, the color channel uh, defined. And we are going to get this message that says, well, I don't know anything about the color. So let's go to this PRT source and add a different magma. And in this magma, we can just go and say, well, I want to set the color to be equal to the velocity and take a look if we'll get anything. No, actually didn't update in this case because last time we didn't have a color and the color wasn't checked automatically because we picked the object but it didn't have the color at that time. So if we go uh, further there and hit render again, this time there is no error and now we have random colors. They don't really random, they actually represent the uh, x, y and z of the velocity vector. So, of course, we can create a vector magnitude, divide uh, this vector magnitude by a certain amount, whatever we think the maximum velocity is, or we can check it with a particle uh, data viewer to see how much we have velocity in, in this uh, PRT source. Here is the particle data viewer. And, uh, oops, there it is. Uh, in the particle data viewer, we see that the velocity here has a magnitude between 31 and 114. So 100 is actually a relatively good number, uh, but let's say 150 is probably even better. And then we'll use this value as function blend again to drive the two colors. Let's say we want again uh, something like red and yellow. So let's update this and hit render and see if we got our gradient now the color of the particle is actually based on how fast the particle was moving at that point and of course once a particle is uh, once of the particles is spawned uh, it's going to keep that color that it got from its parent so we are seeing here history of how fast the particles were moving where those particles were emitted as you can see, with the new updated Cryctopia T birth and Cryctopia T update operators, we can actually interact a lot more with the Cryctopia system, with Magma, with the various uh, emitters uh, and um, PRT objects, with splines, with meshes, and this opens a new um, set of uh, possibilities 
to actually create new uh, interesting setups combining particle flow and cricket tools.